He loved to watch movies. We went to the show every single day. He was friendly. He was a family person, just liked to sit around, watch movies, joke. Everybody always wanted him around, or when they had something, they called him for him to be there. Tony liked the music. He wrote music, he made music for other people, other relatives, neighbors. He had built a studio in the basement and he had like a lot of friends that come over. He would write music for them, write beats, you know, make beats for them. So that was like his whole life, what he wanted to do since he was like eight years old. His son's name is TJ, he's three years old. Tony wanted to be a good father because his biological father got killed before he was born. So he was lacking that, you know, as he was growing up. He had a stepfather, but it still wasn't his biological father. So that's why he wanted to be the best father that he can be and wanted his son with him at all times. From the time that his son was born, he had his son with him. He would dress him, he would teach him how to play ball. He taught him his ABCs, his numbers, how to spell his name, how to say his name. Whatever he's supposed to do as a parent, he did it. Chicago Fire Department. We need an ambulance at 1688. He just got shot. Okay, we outside? Yeah, we're on the back. He said the person got shot. How many people got shot? Uh, what's his name? How many people? How many people? Tony, his name is Tony, only one person. On October 3rd, 2014, shortly after 9 p.m., Tony McIntosh and his brother Todd McIntosh were outside the, of the rear entrance of their apartment at uh, 10618 Adam South Yates within the Trumbull Park homes. The whole family was home, and we was just in the house having a good time, just playing music and just talking and laughing and joking. And then he said, Mom, I'm gonna go on the porch and smoke a cigarette because he know I don't smoke and I don't like to smoke in the house. I learned that mom had stepped out to borrow one of their phones. She was inside enjoying some of her music on, a, on an app on the phone and didn't want to turn off the music. So as I'm out there, he like, okay, mom, when I get off of it, I, you know, let you use it. So I just stood there. I noticed this person just, you know, just standing there in the cut. He finally noticed that I'm looking at him like he's, you know, looking at me. So he walks past. The offender approached and said, what's up? They responded, what's up, back. He had his hand in his pocket the whole time. So as he get past, after he speaks, he pulls the gun out. And fired uh, multiple shots at Tony McIntosh. They attempted to, you know, get in front of the gunman, you know, as he was shooting. I guess he saw he missed, so he like took a step back, walked up right where the walkway was, pow, pow, shot two times right in front of Tony. He blocked it with his arm, so as he blocked it, he turned over in a fetal position, and the last bullet hit him in the back of the head. Mom actually came out and said, stop, stop shooting at my son. Todd ran into the house to call 911 to get the police and the, uh, the paramedics out. I pulled Tony towards me. I'm talking to him, asking him, are you okay? Stay with me. He's just looking at me. So I proceeded to do CPR on him. And the lady come from I don't know where. She put on gloves and she was like, Mom, I'm gonna help you. I do the compression. You just continue to blow in this valve. So we did that for, I don't know how long. It seemed like it was forever. Never took his eyes off of me. He continued to just look at me. Then he took his breath in my mouth. And I'm like, he's gone. She's like, no, he's not. I still feel a pulse. Then blood ran out his nose, his mouth, and The paramedics showed up at that time. And they were saying that they need to work on them for me to let them go. And they took them in, and I followed behind them to the hospital. And they finally came out and told me he was gone. 
He didn't make it. Have you been in an accident? Have you been the victim of discrimination or had your rights violated? Have you been injured? If so, the lawyers at Hale Law would love to talk to you. We offer a free consultation. Call me, Andy Hale, 312-870-6926. 312-870-6926. I look forward to talking with you about your case. On October 3rd, 2014, shortly after 9 p.m., Tony McIntosh and his brother Todd McIntosh were outside at uh, 10618 Adam South Yates within the Trumbull Park homes. They observed a lone suspect coming from the south end of the complex, walking along the sidewalk pathway. The offender approached and said, what's up? They responded, what's up, back? And the offender then turned around and fired uh, multiple shots at Tony McIntosh. TJ missed him extremely. That's all he talks about. Whenever he sees me or, you know, my family, like my daughter, my other son, he's looking around and he's looking for his dad. So he'll sit there for a while before he even speak or play or do anything because he just waiting on him to show up. I mean, I can't sleep. Um, at fear at all times. Anything that's on TV, you know, that's violent or have anything to do with crime, it's, it's just upsetting. It's so hard for me to wake up in the morning and just know I'm still here and he's not here. He took my life, my future. He took everything from me and he didn't have the right he wasn't God, so how are you going to take something from me that you didn't even make? I arrived here at the crime scene where Tony McIntosh was shot. Uh, there's still a bullet hole on the bottom part of the door here. There were blood stains here. This is the area where Tony's mother attempted to uh, give him CPR. The crime scene was cordoned off by uh, police tape. Myself and other detectives from Area South, we conducted a canvas of this whole complex, the uh, Trumbull Park Homes. The shooter in this case came from uh, a southern direction, walking northbound. As he uh, came upon the victim, got a little closer, produced his firearm, shot at, the shot at the victim. The offender then turned, ran in a northbound direction, which would be this way, and then east around the corner of this building here. We continued working with other detectives here, uh, canvassing the area, attempting to find other witnesses hoping that the community would step up and give us uh, an assistance with uh, this crime. I just want them to just come forward. I mean, all the crime that's going on in the world, somebody needs, it's time for somebody to speak up. All this street code stuff, it, it just needs to stop. If they speak up more and we get these people, we can take our city back. We can take the streets back. But as long as they keep it silent, it's gonna continue to go on. We need the public's help in this. We need the community to come forward and help us solve this case for Mrs. McIntosh. We're looking for a male black, late teens to mid 20s, about six foot tall, about 170 pounds, wearing dark clothing, who fled south from 10618 South Yates and then went eastbound between the uh, crosswalk area there of uh, the complex. So if you have any information, please call myself, Detective Cavazos, at Area South Bureau of Detectives at 312-747-8271, or call Case Files at 1-844-40-CRIME. I just want justice for my son, and I want closure. Case Files Chicago. <laughs>